Hello and welcome to our new investment strategy update. The economic breaks are on as we look ahead to the last quarter of 2023. That should keep global growth weak as services decelerate in line with already slow manufacturing. The Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank are both running peak and plateau strategies, keeping rates high and limiting growth for longer, and the full impact is yet to be felt. In addition to this pressure, we see new growth risks, chief among them the rising oil price. The US also faces strikes and student loan repayments that will dent spending power. The American economy's rosy exterior makes the outlook unusually hard to read. Different parts of the economy tell different stories. Housing, manufacturing and credit are all suffering, while consumption and labor markets hold up. The US has avoided a recession for now, but should grow at a subpar pace in the coming quarters. Meanwhile, the gap between the US and other major economies is widening. The Eurozone is slowing more sharply, led by Germany. In China, the economy is still struggling with weak consumer and corporate confidence and local government financing problems. Globally, disinflation is encouraging, which is the good news, even if the path to lower prices is uneven. Until now, we've seen rapid disinflation. Going forward, it might be a bit harder because the prices of services like wages, rents, and mortgage costs take longer to adjust than those of goods. And although unlikely, high oil prices threaten a second wave of inflation. Managing these inflation risks is key for central banks. So for the trajectory of growth and financial markets, relief from rate cuts is unlikely before mid-2024. What does this mean for investors? Well, let's turn to Mark to discover how we are investing for 2023's last quarter. Markets now expect high interest rates to persist. At the same time, high oil prices and China's economic weaknesses pose risks for global growth. These are good reasons for caution in our investment strategy, where we seek to balance recent macro resilience against the lagged effects of high rates. We retain a balanced global equity allocation focusing on regions with better outlooks. Stocks usually deliver positive returns late in the economic cycle. Volatility is also typical, and we see no reasons for this cycle to be different. While valuations are in line with long-term averages and earnings revisions in many developed stock markets have been positive, next year's expectation may prove too optimistic. Third quarter corporate results will be crucial in assessing the resilience of companies' profits. In fixed income, government bond yields, particularly long-dated ones, are still rising, offering increasingly competitive expected returns. With growth slowing and markets pricing the end of the Fed's hiking cycle, we maintain an overweight allocation and a preference for US Treasuries. In credit markets, slowing growth and tight financial conditions lead us to favor investment-grade bonds over high yield. Oil prices have risen on stable demand and extended production cuts. We think that Brent crude oil will trade around $90 per barrel over the coming months, a level that is no longer disinflationary. In currency markets, the US dollar is benefiting from growth and yield gaps between the US and the rest of the world, as well as higher energy prices. We see room for the dollar to strengthen against the major currencies in the months ahead and keep an overweight bias in client portfolios. As we head into the final month of 2023, we will continue to seek new tactical opportunities from an evolving cycle. Thank you very much for watching.